Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I will be talking about different pulpal diseases and in the upcoming classes, I'll be covering periodicular diseases, endodontic diagnosis, endodontic examination and testing, crack tooth syndrome, vertical root fracture and endoperio relationship. So these are pretty much the IMBD topics for endodontics. So today let us talk about pulpal diseases. So what is meant by endodontics is it's nothing but the study inside the tooth. So what are the diseases that can occur inside the tooth? And also it deals with periradicular diseases also. Okay. So it is the science of diagnosing and treating pulpal and periradicular disease. It's a branch of dentistry that is concerned with the shape morphology, physiology, function, and pathology, the diseases of the dental pulp and periradicular tissues. Now, what are the endodontic questions that can be divided into six subjects? As first, you diagnose what it is. You know, it can be a periradicular cyst or reversible pulpitis, irreversible pulpitis. Then case selection, what do you plan for the treatment, patient management, basic endo procedures, and what are the procedural complications? What are the injuries that can occur? And along with the treatment you're giving, what are the adjunctive therapy that should be given? And what is the post-treatment evaluation? We'll be studying about it in detail. So now first we'll be talking about pulp. So pulp is a vital tissue. So therefore it definitely has blood vessels, connective tissues, and we feel sensations. It means it has nerves in them. Several factors make it unique and thus alter its ability to respond to irritation. So like I told you, So what happens is there is very much limited distance for the pulp to expand. Suppose if there is any infection, it cannot expand beyond a particular space. So the pulp is, let's read here, the pulp is almost completely surrounded by heart tissue, which limits the available room for expansion and thus restricts the pulp's ability to tolerate edema. So if there is swelling, you know, it cannot expand beyond a particular point and there is no collateral circulation. So, you know, it cannot cope up with heavy bacteria or after a level of inflammation, it cannot cope up. Pulp possesses unique heart tissue secreting cells or odontoblasts. So these are the odontoblasts over here, which are nothing but heart tissue secreting cells, as well as mesenchymal cells that differentiate into osteoblasts that will help in the formation of more and more dental. So what are the different kinds of um, uh, cells in pulp? It is first, you can see odontoblasts, you can see cell-free zone, you can see cell-rich zone, you can also see central core. And in the cell-free zone, it doesn't mean that there is nothing there. So what it means is there'll be nerves over here, okay, that help in the uh, sensations okay then you have cell red zone where you see fibroblasts and undifferentiated mesenchymal cells and center core has fibroblasts and some undifferentiated mesenchymal cells now what are the different kinds of fibers you can see two fibers a fibers and c fibers a fibers are large and they are covered by myelin sheet whereas C fibers are short as compared and they are unmyelinated. Now, the sensibility of the pulp is controlled by A delta and C efferent nerve fibers. Now, let me tell you what is this dentinal pin. Okay, before that, these fibers enter, A delta fibers enter the root canal and divide into a small portion coronally through the pulp. A delta fiber pain is immediately perceived as a quick, sharp, momentary pain that dissipates with removal of stimulus, like cold liquids, biting on an unyielding object. So what happens exactly over here is, suppose think that um, I'm touching a hot cup of coffee. 
Okay, I'll immediately move it, right? So once there is not much touch, then um, I will not feel the pain. But if uh, there is um, there is a slight burn, like you can see that first a pink kind of a bubble forms, and then later it will be like um, you'll feel the prolonged pain even for two to three days. So this is a chronic pain which is still existing after removal of stimulus, whereas this pain is stops as soon as you remove the stimulus. Okay, so the pain that um, that subsides by the removal of stimulus, the fibers responsible are A, delta fibers. Whereas the pain that does not subside, the fibers responsible are C fibers. Okay, and this association of A delta fibers with the odontoblastic cell layer is called as pulpodentinal complex. Okay. Now, let us study about what is pulpitis pain. In pulpal inflammation, the response is exaggerated and disproportionate to the challenging stimulus. This response is induced by the effects of inflammatory mediators that are released in inflamed pulp. So hyper, hyperalgesia, what does that mean is this example works where I told you that <clears throat> hand is slightly burned. So even though the stimulus is removed, you will still feel the pain. Okay, that is mainly happening because of the inflammatory mediators play, present in here, your hand, the specific finger is swollen. There is inflammation already over there. And that is because there are inflammatory mediators. Similar way, when you, when you remove the um, hot, water or like ice cold water, the stimulus is removed. Still, if there is any pain, it means the pain is chronic. Okay. Now, progression of pulp inflammation can change the quality of pain response. As an exaggerated alpha delta fiber pain subsides, pain seemingly remains and is perceived as a dull throbbing ache. So sharp pain is caused by A delta fibers, whereas dull throbbing pain is by C fibers. Okay. So this second pain symptom that is dull throbbing ache is caused by C fibers. C fibers, like I have told you, are small unmyelinated nerves that course centrally in the pulp stroma. Unlike A delta fibers, C fibers are not directly involved with the pulpodentinal complex and are not easily provoked. A delta fibers are seen along with the odontoblast and they form pulpo dentinal complex, right? But you did not see that kind of uh, complex in C fibers. C fibers occur in tissue injury, like I have told you whenever there is any burn or something, and it is mediated by inflammatory mediators, there'll be changes in the vascular, changes in the blood volume, blood flow, and it will also increase tissue pressure. Now, when C fiber pain dominates. It signifies irreversible oral damage. With increasing inflammation of pulp tissue, C fiber pain becomes only the only pain feature. Hot liquids or foods can raise intrapulpal pressure to excite the C fibers. The pain is diffuse and can be referred to a distant site or other teeth. Okay, so for example, if you have a pain in third molar, and C fibers are active over there, you can feel the pain even near your 
head region or ear region. So that is what they're saying that the pain is diffuse and it is like re referred pain. Okay. And if this inflammation just remains and there is no recovery, that will lead to palpal necrosis. Okay. Now let us talk about different classification of palpal diseases within normal limits. A normal pulp is asymptomatic. You would not have any infection, inflammation. So just let me tell you something. This is very basic. So whenever there is any inflammation, what does it indicate usually? Only when there is any infection, you see accumulation of pus, right? So inflammation is nothing, but it is showing that the pulp is not normal. So normal pulp is asymptomatic. A normal pulp produces a mild to moderate transient response. So you can do electrical pulpal testing, right? So when you do pulp testing, normal pulp will show mild to moderate transient response, okay? Um, and there is no, when you palpate and see, or you, um, you have any doubt on a specific tooth and uh, upon percussion also, you wouldn't notice any painful response. Now coming to reversible pulpitis, then we'll go to irreversible pulpitis. Reversible means the situation can be reversed. So the infection in the pulp can be reversed. In reversible pulpitis, thermal stimuli that is usually cold, like a small ice or anything can cause a sharp quick hypersensitive response that subsides as soon as stimulus is removed. So you remove the stimulus and the pain goes off. Okay, that is reversible pulpitis. Irreversible pulpitis means even though you remove the stimulus, the pain still remains. The infection is irreversible means the pulp will undergo death. That is, the pulp becomes non-vital and it should be removed. Now, reversible pulpitis can be clinically distinguished from a symptomatic irreversible pulpitis in two ways. So there are two kinds in irreversible pulpitis. So in irreversible pulpitis, you can see symptomatic. It means the pulp is still responding. And another one is asymptomatic, means the pulp is not responding over here. Okay, so reversible pulpitis causes a momentary painful response to thermal change that subsides as soon as the stimulus is removed. Okay, so when you give a stimulus, this is ice, okay, ice cold water or something. Now you remove it, there is pain, but here there is no pain even on removal of stimulus, okay? So if there is no symptoms, even though infection is present, it is called as asymptomatic irreversible pulpitis. And if there is any infection and still there is some kind of uh, uh, vitality in the pulp and the fibers can sense the pain, that is called as symptomatic irreversible pulpitis, okay? Irreversible pulpitis. By definition, the pulp has damaged beyond repair and even with removal of irritant, it will not heal. And how does it look microscopically? Of course, there'll be pus. So microabscesses of the pulp begin as tiny zones of necrosis with dense acute inflammatory cells. Okay, you will definitely see abscesses, you'll definitely see inflammatory cells. Histologically, intact myelinated and unmyelinated nerves may be observed in area with dense inflammation and cellular degeneration. So of course, cell death is occurring over here. So, so you'll see necrosis. So cellular degeneration can be seen. Okay, inflammation can be seen. Okay, and also you'll see intact myelinated and unmyelinated nerves, okay? Following irreversible pulpitis, pulp death may occur quickly or may require years. It may be painful or frequently asymptomatic. The end result is necrosis of the pulp. So irreversible pulpitis will be painful only in case of reversible or 
it is not reversible. So again, let me just explain you before you get confused. So irreversible pulpitis and reversible pulpitis. So I was just asking you a question. I was asking you a question. So we are saying irreversible pulpitis, there is painful or it can be completely no pain. So, but we also said that only when you remove stimulus, you can see pain in reversible. So is this situation and this situation same? No. Reversible pulpitis means the inflammation can be reversed. Okay. So it is showing a response whenever you take a stimuli, but then when you remove the stimuli, the pain subsides. In irreversible pulpitis, the pulp has been damaged beyond repair. So there is two kinds. One is symptomatic, symptomatic irreversible pulpitis and asymptomatic irreversible pulpitis. Symptomatic irreversible pulpitis means irreversible pulpitis. So the pulp is non-vital, but it still shows symptoms. That is when you remove a stimuli, you can see that pain subsides or you feel the pain. Whereas in irreversible pulpitis, you do not feel pain sometimes. It doesn't mean that it is not infected. So, you know, for example, if you take this tooth, if it is irreversible pulpitis, still it, no, it would have been dead. So how is this normal? No, right? So you have to still treat this tooth. Now, coming to asymptomatic irreversible pulpitis. So in young individuals, there is something which you notice, that is you can see the pulp is hyperactive and it grows beyond and appears like a cauliflower growth. Okay, that's because the pulp is very much vital. Okay, and there is chronic irritation to the pulp, and this is generally found in young people because they have good vascular supply. Next, we have internal resorption. Internal resorption is you'll only be able to see this mostly only when you take a radiograph. So, if you know the patient will be suffering with chronic pulpitis, they'll definitely be inflammatory cells, multinucleated Jain cells, there'll be granulation tissue, the pulp might be necrotic and only proper endotherapy can be used to cure this patient. Okay, now because this is irreversible, you have to still treat it. There is inflammatory reaction over here. There is another case, replacement of metastatic internal resorption as you can see the presence of metastatic growth over there. Now coming to symptomatic irreversible pulpitis. So symptomatic irreversible pulpitis means there'll always be a spontaneous pain. There'll be a continuous pain, pain, a chronic pain. So sudden temperature changes elicit prolonged episodes of pain that lingers after thermal stimulus is removed. So you remove, therm you remove thermal stimulus, still there will be pain. Okay, and occasionally due to change in the posture, the patients may report some pain. Like when you lie down or get up suddenly, you can see that they see that their jaw is painful. Radiographs are not enough for this. Only they help to suspect, to identify the suspect teeth. Now what happens is, suppose um, here the patient is, you know, he's not able to say where the pain is, okay? Suppose, imagine that. Um, so he might say like this region, it's painful, all right? So radiographs won't tell you, you know, it can sometimes spread also the pain, but then it helps you analyze that, which is the suspect tooth, okay? And in that specific teeth, you can see thickening of the apical portion of periodontal ligament. Okay, so here electronic pulp test has no value or very little value. So to wrap up, we have studied that um, pulp 
diseases, normal pulp will not show any inflammation. Reversible pulpitis can be reversed. That's why it's called reversible pulpitis. Irreversible pulpitis symptomatic means it's a chronic pain. The pulp has been damaged. There is inflammation in the pulp. There are inflammatory cells and the pain still will be there even if you remove the stimulus. Whereas asymptomatic, the pulp is necrosed, but you would not feel the pain. Okay. So, and then A fibers are myelinated, thick, large fibers, and um, C fibers are unmyelinated fibers. And A fibers um, are associated with pulpodentinal complex, and C fibers are not. Okay, so C fibers occur only in case of a very uh, injury should really occur because like, for example, suppose I drink a coffee and then it's really hot and I really feel something that means my A fibers are acting over there. But then there is some infection, there is inflammation, only then C fiber will induce a pain response. Okay, pulp is rich. Uh, in blood vessels, nerves, and connective tissue. That's why it is a vital part. And we know that urantoblasts, nerve cells, cell-rich zones, fibroblasts, and these are important cells which are present, which also help in formation of dentin, few of them. So that's it for today's class. In case you have enjoyed the video, please do share and subscribe and comment and let me know if you like my video and if you have any questions for me. And thank you for watching and stay tuned to my channel.